Now, the Community Service Award, the standards for our recipient have not changed for several decades. And those standards are that a person give extraordinary service to this community over a period of years. The service may be part of a career or a profession, or it may be outside of the person's livelihood. The award is for continued service and not a single activity or event. The committee's decision this year, once again, is a great choice. Our list of recipients run the gamut from business leaders to educators to community workers. And a review of the list, which is on the back side of your program tonight, will show you that many of the finest in Rochester have been recognized over the years. As a chamber, we take great pride in the accomplishments of those who have received Rochester's highest honor. And tonight, we're going to add to that group. Now, the committee does like to tease you a little bit with a few subtle hints. And some of the hints, aren't, some of the hints are not too subtle. Tonight is a historic selection. Keeping it quiet has been tough, but I think we've done a pretty good job. Now a lot of things have changed in Rochester over the past 20 years. Businesses have grown and some have failed to thrive in the recent economic problems. Just for an example, 20 years ago we had First National Bank, Farmers and Merchants Bank, and First Federal Savings and Loan. Today we have eight banks and only one is named just about the same. Woodlawn Hospital had moved to its current site and it had been there a few years, but 20 years ago, some people were still waiting for the swamp to eat the building. <laughs> Downtown Rochester was talking about a Main Street program and not everything changes over 20 years. We also had the Napa Big Blue Wall downtown. That currently is the Flirt and Arnold's building. But over the weekend, or late this week, I saw we now have a new big blue wall downtown. Well, Ace Hardware and Stage were once where Geretti's and several other businesses now sit. An Ivy Tech campus in Rochester was the dream of Judge Doug Morton and two or three educators in town. A lot of the rest of us were kind of saying, no, Doug, you're not going to pull it off. Lily Endowment was starting to encourage communities around the state to think about local community foundations. The Fulton County Library was settling into their new building expanding their services and their readership, and encouraging literacy among the young and in the new adult literacy program. Little did we know that 15 years later, they would need to expand. Now tonight's recipients have had their hands in many of the events mentioned over the past two decades. Two decades ago, Rochester usually recognized the businessmen of the community. And on occasion, we noted that a woman or two did something kind of extraordinary. Since then, we've seen many of our best community leaders have been partners. The Burwells, the Inyards, the McCarters, the Perkies have shown us that we often get more when we realize the value of a partnership in action. And so tonight we do something that we've never done before. We've opened our eyes and decided to honor such a partnership, unlike any other in Fulton County. He's a local boy, gone off, come back, done good, and has been recognized for it. She is a girl from Gilboa Township, Benton County, south of Remington. They met at Purdue, and it remains one of the loves of their life. 
They settled in Rochester, did a little farming and farm management, and 45 years ago decided to take a very serious risk for themselves and their family, a growing family, and opened a savings and loan. While Dick was working at the bank, Suzanne was raising a family of three now successful children. And you know they're successful because they all have IU degrees hanging on their wall. <laughs> at that time, Suzanne was teaching speech and hearing. And when I came to town, I know she was at Argus doing that teaching. She developed an interest in bird watching, traveled with several women in, from Rochester to parts of the world to build on her birding collection. She started working with Marge Overmeyer, the wife of another recipient, on the Friends of the Library. This, together with living with Dick, helped him to deepen her understanding and her appreciation for what can be done for others. As the bank became more successful, both Dick and Suzanne chose to be more involved in the community in a variety of ways. One part of the historic nature of this award is that two decades ago, 1992, Dick Belcher received the Community Service Award. So we're not going to talk about the good works he did before 1992, like helping to lead the community swimming pool program, develop the United Way, or start the bank that now has more than 150 employees across northern Indiana. But he kept working. And what we've noticed over the past 20 years is that Suzanne was working at his side and supporting him all the way and leading him in many of the events they've been involved in. When you think about the good things of the past 20 years, and I'll just mention a few of them, you'll see some of the things that they've been involved in. The Community Foundation, the Main Street Program, the Children's Room at the Public Library Expansion the expansion of Woodlawn Hospital and the construction of the Rochester Learning Center, which did bring Ivy Tech to our community. In the last two projects, the hospital expansion and the Learning Center, they also brought a sense of environmentalism to Rochester in ways that we hadn't seen it before. They helped by leading and encouraging and bringing the use of LEED standards into the buildings. The LEED certification at Woodlawn Hospital. The LEED Silver certification at the Learning Center. Now having a daughter and a son-in-law who are environmental advocates and in the business shows that even rock-ribbed Republicans can see the sense in protecting the environment for our grandchildren. And you cannot talk to Susan Belcher without talking about grandchildren, who are the blessing and the love of her life. There's also the loss of Catherine Jane, who died 12 years ago now. And it is recognized in so much of what they do. But I will tell you, if you do not mention family, they will, with the pictures, on the phones, and everything else. So with the help of family and friends, we are lucky to have both recipients here tonight. Suzanne had a high school reunion at the Gilboa Township High School, which is over South Remington, graduating class of 12 students, and when you're from Gilboa Township, you know the high school reunion is pretty serious. She was over there until just a few moments ago, and she made it here tonight. I forgot to tell her she was being honored tonight when I told her Dick was in order to get her here. Somehow that must have slipped my mind. But when I told her Dick was getting honored, she did say, well, Ted, you know that behind every successful man Behind every successful man 
is a woman rolling her eyes. <laughs> Tonight, for the love of this community, for the many efforts of their time, their talents, and their treasure, their involvement, and their leadership, we honor Suzanne and Dick Belcher and would invite them to come forward. Whatever we have done for the community, uh, it's because that uh, the community has been so good to us. Uh, we've been in, <clears throat> I brought Suzanne, I saved her from <clears throat> out of Purdue University to, brought her to the big city of Rochester. And if you've <clears throat> ever been in Remington, it's, Rochester's a big city. So. <laughs> uh, we feel a great obligation to our community, to the, the, uh, the, the country. We're so lucky to be in this, in the United States of America and have the opportunities that we've had. Thank you very much for this honor. Uh, it's, uh, we're, I, it was, I wonder tonight when I come, driving down here with uh, Suzanne's at Gilboa High School <coughs> reunion and I always brag about her being the top 10 out of 12 and that's pretty <laughs> uh, uh, she getting tired of hearing that joke so, <laughs> Suzanne would you like to say something yeah, I'm overwhelmed I did argue with Mr. Wagoner a lot, and I just didn't get any place with that. He said, you just got to be there. And I said, but this is really important, and I'm counting on meeting with all of these classmates and so forth. So anyway, I'm here, and I'm very grateful to all of you. Um, living in this community has been wonderful for us. And when we moved here, I really thought it was a lot bigger city than it turned out to be. <laughs> it's fine. It's in a good location. We're not far from the children and, and that's wonderful. And it's been a great place to live. And so thank you very much. I, I should uh, relate to you a little bit about uh, how First Federal started. Uh, very good friend of ours, best man in our wedding. I was best man in his and vice versa. Joe Hassler said you should start a bank in Rochester, Indiana. This was in 1965. And he continued to harass me. Have you, have you looked into this? Have you looked into this? And, and through his uh, pushing the, the, the situation, obviously we, we got to start. We have some directors here tonight. Uh, Jay Heidi's been a director since we uh, started in 1966, John Helkinson. Also, I appreciate you guys' uh, guidance in staying with us uh, for the past 40-some years. If nothing, what? Oh, we have Oh, we have Oh, oh, we got some. <clears throat> Uh, other First Federal people back there in the back, uh, I, I can't quite see who it is. <laughs> Larry Falstich and... Uh, Cindy and... Okay, Cindy and Tommy and uh, others. Uh, <laughs> Jody. Okay, Jody. And Terry. Okay. Well, my God, you guys came all the way out here in the bushes for this? <laughs> well, the community has been great to us, and we, in turn, have tried to share back. My, my parents taught me that a long time ago, that it was better to share, and uh, Mom and Dad did that, and... Uh, I hope to continue it. 
And uh, thank you very much for this honor tonight. I, I just can't believe this, and I can't believe you left the Gilboa High School reunion. <laughs> she did it for you, Dick. Yeah, right. Thank you very much.